Sean is in the house. Good evening, everybody. Hi, what's shaking? We're back in our lecture series. I haven't given it a name yet. Be Happy, Forgive More Lecture Series. That's kind of what I'm calling it right now. We'll see what it ends up being called. Because I do think in this realm of communication, it really does come down to forgiveness. Like, how quickly can you forgive yourself and others? I'm not talking about the forgiving and forgetting thing. Not even close. Um, we dispel all those myths about forgiveness here at Project Forgive. And uh, tonight's topic, I love tonight's topic. Tonight's topic is about how to handle upsetting conversations when you are at a loss of how to deal with it. Maybe it shocks you a little bit, um, whoever's sharing with you is upset, and then you get upset. You know, you just kind of do that pinball machine. One person's upset, the next person gets upset, and then upset, 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 upset. <laughs> no connection happens. That's the topic tonight. Okay, before we get started, hi, I see you guys are showing up. I'll say hey to you in just a sec. I got a shout out our sponsors. We have the most amazing sponsors, and tonight's sponsor is a Facebook page called Thank You, um, no, called Joyful Inspired Living with Anita Adams. Joyful Inspired Living with Anita Adams, Adams, and I'll be sure to put a link up to her page. You can go check out her page. She's very aligned to what we do here at Project Forgive, and her mission is to inspire you to create a life full of joy. So she is a perfect fit for Project Forgive. A couple of things that she does is that um, she works with a nonprofit arts organization that she started like in 2003, um, and it promotes Canadian films and talent. And the other thing she does is she's a Rodan and Fields representative. Um, and I happen to love Rodan and Fields. So that is our sponsor today. Anita, thank you so much. Joyful Inspired Living. A uh, couple of quick uh, updates real quick before I get into all the content. Um, if you're inspired by our masks, please check them out. I'll put up a link. We've got these exquisite masks. Uh, uh, kindness is contagious. We have white ones, black ones. Would love for you to get some of those. We also have a daily joy email that goes out to supercharge your day. I'll put up the link for that. We also have a new Joy is a Habit Facebook group. And um, we really come from the place that Joy is a Habit. Um, and you have to actively seek it out. So if you're inspired by that, we'll put up that link. Also, last but not least, if you're part of a progressive company that hires virtual present presenters as well as in person, although I'm not doing much in person these days, mostly virtual, and on, an, on uh, respect, inclusion, loyalty in the workplace, and of course, forgiveness as a leadership tool, please feel free to forward our information to your folks in marketing, leadership, HR, because we work with many co companies, including Fortune 500 companies, government agencies, hospital systems, and universities. I'll put up a contact information there. Okay, so tonight's topic. It's about how to handle upsetting conversations when you are at a loss on how to deal with it, them, or the situation. So here's the bottom line with that. I'm going to talk for a couple minutes, then I'll come in and see what you guys are saying, and I'm going to tell you to give me some ideas in this one, too. It really is about dropping defensiveness, and that is such a skill to be able to get present in the moment, because someone says something like, let's say, uh, I broke your laptop. <laughs> I've had somebody say that to me. Um, your immediate reaction is upset, shock, like, oh my gosh, you broke my laptop. And like, how do you calm yourself, soothe yourself in the moment so you can be present and just take the next right step in the moment? And that's what tonight's lecture really is about. It's the distinction between reacting versus being deeply grounded. Um, I have this quote on my computer, and I read it every day. It's one of my favorite quotes, and it says, If I defend myself, I am attacked. But in defenselessness, I will be strong, and I will learn what my defenses hide. And I do believe, and that comes from ACIM, I'm a, I love A Course in Miracles, um, that comes from this ability to really look at yourself and be deeply accountable and responsible for your life, that I can learn what my defenses hide. Because I do believe our defenses hide stuff. And it's even at the most critical stage when somebody's sharing something really upsetting, because that's when you need to breathe the most and drop your defensiveness the most. And just so you know, too, with upset, sometimes we think that 
it's a one hit wonder like boundaries. Last week we talked about boundaries. I'll put up a link about boundaries that it's an ongoing process of retraining people. Upsetting conversations are not one hit wonders. You don't just have the upsetting conversation and then you're done with it. It doesn't work that way. Um, especially by my definition of an upsetting conversation. Um, another one might be, you know, I'm 16, hey mom, I'm pregnant. And your 16 year old tells you that she's pregnant. That is pretty shocking. And it's not a one and done, like you just deal with it and it's over with. No, it's an ongoing communication along the way. So let me give you some ideas, okay? Um, like I said, I'm 16 and I'm pregnant, mom. I broke your computer. What about, I overdrafted the bank account and the fees are more than $500. <laughs> that will get my blood boiling. Um, uh, my mother is very upset with what you said to her today. How could you do that to her? <laughs> you can replace it with sister. You can replace it with a coworker. Um, here's another one along the similar similar vein. Mary told me that you hated our bridesmaids maids dresses. I'm just broken hearted. I can't believe you would say that and that you wouldn't tell me. Okay, there's lots of examples there. Now you can notice I'm kind of staying in the middle ground for some of these examples. If you have one that you'd like to hear some feedback on, throw it in the feed, okay? And I'll be sure to check in as I go through. I can see there's a lot of you here. Tonight's topic is upsetting conversations. Yeah, I'm just looking to see if anybody's saying something that they need to say. It's mostly just saying people are here. Hi, everybody. Hi, Lisa, Lane. Hi, Rita. I see you guys are here. I'm not seeing comments yet, just that folks are in the house. That's great. Okay, if you've got a topic about something that's upsetting, throw it up there. Okay, here's, the, I, I kind of see an upsetting conversation in two phases for that first initial conversation. Phase one is being as authentic and real and grounding yourself as much as possible. And how I do it is I'll say to myself, I'll say, well, that's a doozy. What am I gonna do to be here now? That's literally how I talk to myself in my head. And um, an authentic and real is simply the best. So I've got several examples from that first phase. And don't worry, I'll put all of them up once the lecture is over. I see you guys, I'll come to you in a second. Okay, so phase one is like some like like you're let's say it's the sixteen year old says I'm pregnant. First response, deep breath. Deep breath is always good. Wow, I am at a loss for words. And then be quiet. One of the biggest mistakes we make in upsetting conversations, when we're real and authentic, we start droning on and on. And I'm going to get to that in a second. I'm going to talk about our own narcissism because we all have tendencies to be narcissistic. We really do. It's part of a human condition. There's, and I know people get triggered by the word narcissist. I don't mean it in a bad way in this context. I mean it more in a human way when we kind of sometimes make things all about us. We do that. We do that sometimes. And in upsetting conversations, the narcissism feels very invalidating. So I'll dive into that a little bit deeper. This is a deep conversation tonight, okay? All right, so authentic and real is simply the, is simply the best way to deal with it. I'm back at phase one. Wow, I'm at a loss for words. Here's another one. Huh. And then you be quiet. Huh is a response. Here's another one, so real and so authentic. Well, that's a difficult one to respond to. And then you be quiet. Wow, well, I need some time to, to digest this one. One that I love, that's high level skill set, when I, especially when I teach in corporations about upsetting conversations. One of the highest things you can say while you're upset, someone shares something upsetting. Maybe they didn't get their, they went over budget by $100,000. One of the most precious things you can say during upset is, tell me more. It takes skill to say, tell me more. Got it. Another way, another way of, especially if like, it's getting heated and the other person is getting louder and louder. Not that they're yelling yet, okay? This isn't about yelling. They're getting louder and louder. One of the things that I use, I'll say a lot, is please lower your voice. I really care about what you have to say. Just lower your voice a little bit for me so I can really hear you. People always respond to that, especially when I'm really, really calm and they're very, very upset. 
Make sense? Now, phase two. Let's see what you guys are saying about this one. Here, let me, let me pull you up. What are you saying about this one? This is that phase one, upsetting conversations. Yep, got it, Jean. I'm going to give you something else with, um, I love, I've been saying, I'm sorry you feel that way. It's more about being empathic, because there's a lot of ways you could say, I'm sorry you that feel that way. So let me just play with this for a second. And I know you don't do it shaming. I already know that. You're up, you're here enough. Um, well, I'm sorry you feel that way. Versus, oh, I'm sorry you feel that way tell me more. There's something else needs to be added to that. I'm sorry you feel that way. I'm, I'm sorry you feel that way. I'm feeling very empathic to what you're saying. I, I really would like to know more. Another way. It's all about that being. Who are we being when we say it? Right? Thank you for bringing that up, Jean. That's great. Let's see what anybody else is saying something that I need to look at. I'm just, yeah, you're welcome. Um, Anaya. Anaya. Yep, you're welcome. You're so spot on, Mary. That's exactly what it does. It diffuses the situation. And it actually validates people as human beings when they're upset and letting them be upset. And you're tapping into exactly what I'm talking about, about our own narcissism. Now, now when I use the word narcissism in this context, I'm not meaning that you're narcissistic and you don't care about people or any of that. I don't mean that at all. I mean more about our own biological, anthropological tendencies to be in it for ourselves. We, that's just part of growing up. And the more mature we get, the more we advance and the more we evolve, it becomes less about me and more about everyone or others, right? So this is more about a leadership conversation of evolving so you, it's not just about you. Because sometimes we have a tendency when someone's really upset we get upset and then we start bleh, 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 talking about our upset. I'm so guilty of that with my husband. That's something I'm really practicing. Like he might share something that he's really upset about. So I'll give you a perfect example. He's been going to the farmer's markets with his daughter, with our daughter, and um, he sells um, keto bars. He does these just exquisite keto bars and they do these... Um, Rachel's going to kill me if I can't think of what it's called. Buckeyes. And it's all keto, okay? And um, and he spends the day there. And some days there's great sale or good sales, never great. Some days there's better. And then he sells his spray that he sprays on the garden, garden stuff that makes plants really grow and makes gardens grow. And, you know, and I'm, and if he's ever upset that there's not enough people there or, you know, it's like, oh, only this happened. My immediate response is I start getting upset. And I want to say something like, well, quit going to that farmer's market. What a waste of your time, okay? Like, I want to coach him. That is not what he needs to hear. And this morning, it started to happen again. He went yesterday, and I caught myself, and I said, honey, I am. He said, I don't like it when you do that. I said, I am so sorry. It's really not my business why you go or don't go. And I keep thinking it's about me because I want you to do better and blah, 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 blah. Well, where the conversation ended up going that I did not expect, it opened up another whole layer of intimacy. And I've been married 25 years, okay? He says, well, I'm really appreciating you saying that because this is my way to connect with people in COVID. My husband is very deeply introverted. So going to networking events, even pre-COVID, was always a struggle for him. So this stretches him to connect with people and helps him feel more connected with himself. And he's doing it in a very safe way. Don't get, you know, don't get me wrong at the farmer's market. They've got it all distance and all that. And it's just really enabling him to connect. And I was so moved. I was moved to tears when he shared that with me. And I said, I guarantee I will never come back at you when you're upset about the farmer's market with me coming back with my upset. Does this make sense what I'm sharing? I'm just imagining you guys can relate to this, okay? Because we tend to have a tendency to go into our own upset when someone shares their other upset, when someone shares their upset. So that's a perfect example. So now, I've already moved you through options one with talking very authentically. Let's see if you guys are saying anything about the example I just gave. Let me just look. Let me peek real quick. I see you guys. Let's see, let's see. You know, I do, I'm, we're gonna pass on any really 
extreme religious rhetoric, because that's not what this is about today. This is about helping us in our human experience have increased skills so we can be more loving and be more spiritual. Um, it's not about religious talk. I just I feel the need to say that. Okay, let's see what else. Oh, good. I'm glad you're getting it. Perfect sense. Yep, gotcha, Sandra. All right. So we got this phase one of really authentic responding. Like, wow. Oh, I'm at a loss for words. Hmm, these are complete sentences. If it starts going longer and it's feeling your feet, you are feeling, you can feel that, what's that, anxiety edge. What is, anxiety isn't the right word, but you can feel yourself like coming, like almost coming out of your body, or you can feel yourself starting to rev up. And I know when I'm starting to rev up, and I say things like this, this is for that phase too, like, okay, you know, can we take a break for a little while? I need to process. <sighs> Works every time. You know, I really appreciate this conversation. I just need to take a little bit of a break. I need to process some of this. And other comments that will help diffuse. Your point of view makes sense. Um, you can help guide too, saying things like, what are your concerns? What is, what is actually concerning you here? Um, dependent upon the relationship, what are you really frightened of here? It's, it's, I'm getting that you're possibly frightened. What are you frightened of? Other questions, how can I support you in this? Um, and then, I'm not looking for support. I got it, and I love you so much, I really wanna support you. So if something comes to mind, please let me know as we talk about this because I care about you. And I, sometimes, you know, when I would do these lectures, I'd say, do people really talk like this? Oh my gosh, who talks like this? Yes, people really do talk like this. It's a skill, it's profound intimacy. It gets really easy and really fun when you start getting good at it and you start getting more present. You start having more joy. You start having more peace. You actually feel like you have some facility in how you share and express yourself, and you feel a lot of freedom. So yes, people really do talk like this. How can I support you in this? We're back in phase two. Tell me what. Tell me what you hear me saying. You're. You don't get me. Oh, I want to get you. Tell me what you're. What you hear me saying and let's kind of regroup so I can really make sure I'm hearing what you have to say, right? You're not getting me. Let me try that again. Can we start over? Great phrases to say. What else are you saying? And you know what, Jeannie? Like when you're saying my way, just so you know, it's not about strength, it's about frickin' practice. So you're, like how it works is, you're going to be in it, and you might even have me pop in your head, and you'll say, okay, I want to kill this person. Let's just, let me take a breath so I can handle this with grace, even though I want to kill them. And maybe you don't kill them. <laughs> it's the progress. So it's about progress, not perfection. You get better as you start practicing. And it's really about awareness, because if you're not aware you're doing it, and you just do it unconsciously, and it just comes right out of that amygdala brain, and it's just boom, 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 boom. It's like you're just unconscious splathering. That will never work. It's more about making the mistakes as you go, because you'll say, ooh, yeah, I said that, yeah. Well, yeah, that's, that's not gonna work. I wanna do this instead, so I'll think about that for next time. And it's kind of like, um, I'm a former 12-step program person. Anybody else ever do 12-step programs? Um, I was never alcoholic, I just happened to marry them. <laughs> Anyone can relate to that. I'm making a codependency joke. I am not making light of alcoholism. Please no. I'm just trying to be funny. So that's it. Um, real active in adult children of alcoholics. Really active in survivors of incest anonymous. I went to 12 step a long, long, long time. And Claudia Black, I think her name was Claudia Black. I remember years ago hearing these stories early on in 12 step programs. And uh, pardon me, let me just light my nose. Pardon me. For those just joining us, we're talking about when you're really upset, how do you manage yourself with grace when an upsetting conversation is going on? So anyways, Claudia Black, 
Um, I'll be sure to put up that poem. I can't think of what the poem, you know, I'll see if I can find it. Let me write it down so I make, make sure I get it. Claudia, I think her name's Claudia Black. If you're, correct me if I'm wrong, if anyone knows. Um, yep, I see it to the 12th step. Uh, and I will make sure I have a correct name in that. So, but here's like the gist of the story. I'm paraphrasing, paraphrasing. Um, you're walking down the street and all of a sudden you fall in the black hole and you can't get out. Next day, you're walking down the street, you fall in the black hole again, and you can't get out. Next day, you're walking down the street, you see the black hole, you still fall in, and you're trying to find a way to get out. Next day, you're walking along, you see the black hole, you fall in, and you get out immediately. Next day, you're walking down the, the street, you see the black hole, you're doing everything you can to not fall in the hole and you're grabbing on trees and you still fall in the hole and you get out very very quickly and then finally you get to the point where you see the street and you decide to go down another street i love that that was my paraphrase of it um it's about awareness and it's about practice and it's about noticing when you're doing things it's a game of noticing and um, that's how you raise your awareness, making the unconscious conscious, making the unconscious conscious. So anybody else got something they got to say? That's the gist of tonight. Let's see. I know. Isn't that cool, Jean? I so get it. Let's see if there's anything somebody's saying that I need to respond to. I see you guys are in the house. I see ya. I see ya. The Facebook lives have changed. You are so welcome, Anan, Ana, Anaya. Pretty name. Carried away, let's see. Yeah, we're getting, yeah, I'll have to delete the religious stuff. Don't get me wrong, I happen to be a Christian. I just don't force my religious beliefs on others. And um, that to me is not witnessing or being spiritual. So I just don't like it. And it doesn't happen very often and it feels important to say it when it's happening. Um, and notice, five years ago, that would have been a really upsetting conversation. And now it's like, no, that isn't going to work. Got to set a boundary. That won't work. Um, don't get me wrong. I love Jesus and I love God. And um, this is a format for people to feel safe no matter what the religion is, no matter what they believe, no matter what they think. Yeah. Got it? Let's see. Anybody else saying something before I close? Anything? Questions? Thought? Yeah, I so get it, Joan. I'm curious, if you want to put an example up there, I'm happy to address that. Maybe that can be a topic some other time about self-sabotage. You're welcome, Sandra. My absolute pleasure. You are so welcome, Terry. Okay, a couple things before we go. Thank you, Joyful Inspired Living, for Anita Adams, so much for sponsoring us. Um, next week's lecture is next Sunday, 7 p.m. I want to do one wrong move syndrome. That's going to be the topic. Like... Something like you're chugging along, everything's going great, and then you get this in your chest because you did made one wrong move and you think it's all going to fall apart like a, like a house of cards. Or you make one mistake and someone emotionally abandons you. Um, or a great example here for Project Forgive, I might put up one post. We put up, I don't know, 50 posts a day. One post in five weeks is one you don't like. And I'll be darned if I don't get a message from someone that says, I can't believe you put up this post. How dare you? That was so rude. And I'm thinking, well, what about the 3,000 others? Were those okay? And that to me is that one wrong move syndrome. And how do you deal with that internally? So that's going to be the topic next week. Also, if you find this broadcast helpful, please share because when you share us, that's what really impacts our sponsors to help us support our programs and our movement. And I um, appreciate that from you. Okay, that's it. Mwah! I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining.